Smartphone software updates. Apps such as Antutu Benchmark updates as well. This leads to fluctuating score results. I have 10 Snapdragon 865 powered smartphones here with me today to do an Antutu Benchmark run three times. Not one, not two, but three times. We have the most expensive all the way on the left to the cheapest all the way on the right. Bear in mind that the prices that I have placed here in US dollars are currently the exchange rates used from the Chinese price of these devices. We have updated the software here. We have the same LPDDR5 on all of them. They all have high refresh rate panels except for the 60 Hertz on the Redmi K30 Pro Zoom Edition. The three on the left have 120 Hertz AMOLED. We have 90 for the rest of them. 144 for the Red Magic 5G, 144 for the iQOO Neo 3, which is stuck to an IPS LCD display. All of them have the option of Full HD Plus. We only have four phones here with QHD Plus panels, but we have dropped them down to Full HD Plus to match that of the rest of the devices on the table here. They all have their respective high performance, game mode, game space. All phones have these these days. Unfortunately for the Black Shark 3 Pro, Shark Space does not support Antutu, so we're not going to be using that over here. We are going to be using the Active Fan on the Red Magic. 5G though and monster mode with ultra game mode on the iQOO Neo 3. They're all updated to the latest version 8.3.7 of N22. Guys, this is Technic and without further ado, let's go. We're going to start here with a quick run of battery percentage and battery degree Celsius check at the start of the test. Hottest so far being the Oppo and coolest being the iQOO. Hottest in the CPU being the Black Shark and coolest being the iQOO once more. We'll refer to that later on after we have finished all three tests to see which one has remained the coolest and which one has added the most in degree Celsius in battery, CPU and as well as drain, battery drain at the end of all three tests. So I'm going to speed things up over here and I'm going to bring them back to real time as you guys can see over here. As you can see at the top of the screen, it says first and 2 version 8.3.7 run. So this is indeed the first run. I'm not going to run it at full speed, 100% the entire time. I am going to speed it up so that I don't keep you guys here all day. We're still on the first and 2 run over here. Now 100% for phase two of N22 version 8 benchmark over here. As you can see, we're shooting at real time. All of them look nice and snazzy since we're rocking the Snapdragon 865 processing chips run on 7 nanometer plus technology. We're going to wrap up this test now and go to the first and 2 version 8.3.7 run results as you guys will see in a minute over here as soon as we swipe through the rest of this. First place in the first test goes to the Oppo Find X2 Pro with 602,000 and 10th the S20 Ultra with 529,000. Really disappointing for Samsung, but I'm not surprised yet. It is indeed the Snapdragon version that I do have of the S20 Ultra, though I'm not surprised since it usually gets this kind of results in these kinds of tests from what I have experienced so far. Second Antutu run kickstarting over here. We're going to speed it up once again and get to the third phase of Antutu version 8 here, something that we sped through in the first test run. And now we're going to be checking out the Terracotta Soldiers, which are here in China in a province called Xi'an. I have personally seen them. They look absolutely phenomenal. I definitely recommend going there though I haven't really seen them in snow like this so I guess that would be pretty cool and the horses don't really seem to come to life. <laughs> That's a little side joke over there but nevertheless this is the most strenuous part of the Antutu version 8 test here. You can see things are slightly laggy over here on all phones even with their beastly Snapdragon 865 processing power chips but they are still doing a pretty great job. Remember Antutu isn't based on speed how fast it can run through the test but on scores some of them that finish last actually get higher scores from what I've experienced in previous Antutu benchmark tests between all of these phones. We're going to speed through over here to the refresh rate, the scrolling part of the Antutu in our second run over here to see how well the scrolling is dealt with on all of these high refresh rate panels. Unfortunately, we are stuck to 60 FPS, 60 Hertz on the Redmi K30 Pro Zoom Edition over here. As you guys can see, it is a slight bit slower if you guys are wondering how these hurts actually come into play in Antutu, make sure you go watch my other video after this where I compare Antutu results between 144 hertz, 120 hertz, 90 and 60 hertz refresh rate panels that you guys are seeing here in slow motion so that you can see a true difference over there. Moving on to the third run right after this, but first we want to check out the second Antutu run scores, which we'll flash through any second over here, just waiting for that red magic to finish scrolling over there. 
Moving on up to the second and 2-2 two -two run results over here. First place now moves to the Red Magic 5G. The Oppo Find X2 Pro went from first to ninth with 538,000. Guys, remember, feel free to hit pause here if you want to compare more, but I will be doing a thorough comparison at the end of this. 10th place, still the S20 Ultra, really taking a big knock there, dropping to the lowest score I've ever seen on an N22 version 8 with a Snapdragon 865 powered smartphone. We're going to speed through this last third test over here, get to the results and then the comparison results. Third and 2-2 run results over here. First place, now the IQ Neo 3 with 590,000. Ninth, still the Oppo with 499 and dead last, the Samsung once again, 438. That is absolutely shocking, guys. We're going to be comparing them right after we check out the temperatures at the end here. Battery percent and battery degree Celsius check at the end of these three tests. We have the least battery drain on the S20 Ultra with negative 11% and the most battery drain with the Realme X50 Pro, 19% there. We have the coolest phone being the Samsung with 39.9 degrees, but the hottest one being the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro with 48.2 degrees. We added 12.5 degrees on the Xiaomi, adding the most in degrees Celsius, and we added the least in degrees Celsius with the Black Shark 3 Pro, only adding 5.8 degrees Celsius over there. When it comes to CPU, degrees Celsius check at the end of these three tests. The coolest phone is indeed the Samsung once again with 39 degrees Celsius. The hottest phone is the Xiaomi with 51 degrees Celsius. And the phone that added the most in degrees Celsius in the CPU department is the Xiaomi with 11 degrees, Oppo Ace 2 with 11 degrees, and iQOO Neo 3 with 11 degrees, with only 6 degrees added on the Black Shark 3 Pro, making it the coolest over here. Total averages of all three tests here, guys. This took me a hell of a long time to do, so please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. First place going to the iQ Neo 3 here with 592,000. Second place, the Redmi K30 Pro, 589. Third, 589 for the Red Magic. Fourth place, 589 once again for the Xiaomi. Just a couple digits in difference between those. Fifth place, 587 for the Realme X50 Pro. Sixth place, 589. 81,000 for the Black Shark 3 Pro, 7th place 554 for the OnePlus 8 Pro, 8th place 547 for the Oppo Ace 2, 9th place Oppo Find X2 Pro with 546 and dead last average of 486,000 for the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, slightly disappointing over there. And for those geeks out there such as myself, here is a screen filled with all the detailed GPU, CPU, memory and user experience results, first test being at the top over there. Middle one is the second run and the last one is the third run. If you guys would like to see more details there, feel free to hit pause on the screen now. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. This is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.